Welcome to the What's New webcast series for SOLIDWORKS 2012. This webcast covers the fundamentals of SOLIDWORKS 2012. My name is Bill Mitchell and I'll be doing the webcast today. So what we're going to cover during this webcast are the 2012 user interface enhancements, some graphics enhancements, uh, some of the new tutorials, new options for document recovery and resource monitoring, and then some of the options um, for the installation manager in 2012. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to cover is the addition of some mouse gesture options, and then we're going to talk about uh, recent documents, open documents, different ways to open files, um, a new search command, and um, the ability to select all spanning and fitting displays, and then also changing the unit of measure in the status bar. So let's go ahead and switch over to SolidWorks, and we'll go ahead and open up a file. So the first thing that I want to cover is the addition of uh, kind of a consolidated menu options whenever you're opening assemblies. Um, for several releases, SOLIDWORKS has supported opening things in lightweight and large assembly mode, but now there's a pull-down menu um, that affords you direct access to those options without having to find the checkboxes. There's also a new option called Large Design Review, which we'll cover in uh, another webcast, but Large Design Review allows you to open up an assembly, very large assembly, and do things like measure, uh, do walkthroughs, those types of things, uh, without having to load all that data into memory. You can also always open up a, a specific configuration or a display state, and if you have speed pack derived configurations, you can also open those directly. So I'm going to go ahead and open up just this assembly file, and um, as it's opening, uh, you may notice up in the top right corner of the user interface, there's an option to search commands. That's a new new option, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so let's go ahead and let this thing finish loading. Okay, so you may also may notice that the shadowing is a little bit different in 2012. This is due to a new option called ambient occlusion, which changes the way that the graphics or the shadowing um, gets projected. You can see if I toggle this off, it uh, is a little bit brighter. If I toggle this on, the shadows get cast a little bit differently. Um, you will notice that as you rotate the model, ambient occlusion um, becomes disabled, and then whenever you select it or turn it again, the shadows get recast, and uh, ambient occlusion gets turned back on. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, talk about some of the other interface options. If I go into my options, there is a new option called freeze bar. So if I open up a part file, so maybe just uh, open up this guy. And again, this is going to get covered in the webcast for parts. But if you don't see this option, what, what the freeze bar allows you to do is to select, it's almost like a reverse um, rollback bar. You can select options, uh, select features rather, that you don't want to rebuild. Um, this would be useful in the case of um, a part file that has a very complex sketch or some in-context relationship that you don't necessarily want to rebuild every time. It does give you an indicator if the um, if the feature is out of date, but the intent of it is to help you um, increase rebuild times or control them at least. So if you're not seeing that bar and it is off by default, you're going to want to go to System Options, General, and then Enable Freeze Bar. Like I said, this is off by default, so if you're not seeing it or you see it on someone else's workstation, that's how you enable it. Uh, some of the other options while I'm in this dialog box is um, errors, message or messages, errors, and warnings. Previously, this was labeled advanced, and the um, this is a little bit more intuitive. Um, dismissed messages, this used to be just a single list, but now you can uh, you know, re-enable those options. And it was something, as I said, in previous release, releases, it was a little bit... Um, a little bit confusing about what the intent of the advanced section was, and now they've relabeled it and made it a little bit easier to understand what you're doing. Um, so some of the other options within the user interface is the ability to change the unit of measure directly. So down here in the taskbar in the bottom right, you can see that I can change the unit of measure. So if I edit this, right now it's in, done in terms of inches. If I want to switch this, I can select that and then it switches it to metric. Uh, previously, you would have to go into options, document properties, and turn that option on to change the unit of measure, but now this is just directly within the user interface, so it's a quick way 
to change things. Um, another way to do it, obviously, is just to put in the, the unit of measure after the, the, the number. So say, for example, you wanted this to be um, you know, 0 0.375, I could say 0 0.6 millimeters or whatever value. So long as you put the unit of measure after it, SolidWorks will always calculate it for you. But uh, this is a quick way to change a unit of measure. Um, coming back into the user interface, and I apologize for this being a little bit clipped, but if you go to Tools and then Customize, uh, one of the, the options is Mouse Gestures. Um, this has been around for a couple of releases, and it's something that you do have to enable. You can have four mouse gestures or eight mouse gestures. Um, you can show the commands, and you have different modes, Part, Assembly, Drawing, and Sketch. So for each area of SolidWorks, um, you've got different mouse gestures that you can assign. If you show only commands with mouse gestures assigned, it, eliminate, it limits the menu options. So the things that they've added in 2012 is the ability to have an OK button. Um, so if I edit a feature, say for example, I go in and edit this sketch. Now with my mouse gestures, since I'm in a sketch, I have those options available. I can also exit the sketch. Or if I edit the feature, when I'm in a feature mode, I have OK. So those options uh, with, with mass gestures are intended to prevent you from having to go all the way over to the left side of the screen, to the right side of the screen, and so on. Um, this becomes relevant with, with larger monitors, obviously. Um, so that's, that's a new feature in SOLIDWORKS 2012. Another option, go ahead and pin this open. If I go to Window and I select any given folder, I can select Open Folder Containing, which will open up Windows Explorer. Let me go ahead and bring this in. So that opens up the folder that the file in question is actually opened in or that, that where it's stored. So that's a new option is being able to open containing folder. I can also take this file. If it's something that I'm going to be working on uh, quite a bit, I can always pin it to my start menu so what this will or to my file menu. So what this allows me to do if it's if it's a proj ongoing project and I want to not have to hunt for it over and over, I can just pin it to my file menu and allows me to uh, access that file directly. You can always also you know tap your R key for recent documents and that'll bring that open as well. But going to file, you can see that this is pinned. I can also close files directly from this. If I select this, I can close that document. So if I want to close the assembly uh, directly, I can do that. Or if I want to close this file, it takes me back into the assembly file. Uh, one of the options, as I mentioned earlier, is the ability to, to uh, search commands. So I'm going to unpin this give myself some real estate up on the bar. And so say if I want to do a whole series, if I'm not sure where it's at in the menu system, I can just type in whole. And you can see as it goes through, it starts filtering the command. So this is a good way for you to access commands that aren't necessarily something that you use all the time. I can show command location. So if I want to know where it's at, it shows and actually drives it directly to the command, so that's very helpful. And then it also points an arrow, so which is, that's kind of a cool cool new feature. Um, now keep in mind, a lot of these types of features require an advanced graphics card, meaning that you do need an OpenGL video card or a certified graphics card. Uh, something like an onboard video card may not necessarily do it, or if it's um, you know a, a Radeon or a um, GeForce card, which aren't really OpenGL cards, a lot of these graphic type things uh, may not be available on those types of cards. So that's the search command. Um, we covered unit of measure. Um, spanning and fitting displays was something I was going to discuss. So you do see these new icons up here. You can see click left to tile the icon, to tile it left, right, maximize it. And then if I were doing this across uh, dual display, you could also pan uh, SOLIDWORKS across dual displays. Uh, that's obviously a little bit difficult to show in this type of webcast, but um, SOLIDWORKS is getting more and more in tune with users having multiple displays, which most of us usually do. So the other options um, that we were going to cover are the ability to select all. So if I select 
a face and then do a control A, it's going to select all of the faces. Likewise, if I select an edge, do a control A, it should let me do it or I might use an edge filter. I think that might actually only be available in a part mode, I apologize. So let me open up this part, select the face, it selects all of the faces. Now this would be useful for you maybe doing a surface offset. If you needed to create a, um, a shell of what the part was, I could just do a surface offset with a zero distance. That copies the surface on top of itself. And so now I've got one solid, and then I've also got a surface body. Um, that's going to be useful in situations where you're trying to create a mold or split or something like that, where you, you, you need a surface body, but you don't necessarily want the solid data to be there. Come down, let's go ahead and delete this feature. And again, if I use my selection filters, or I just select an, an edge, select Control A, it selects all of the edges. Um, that's going to be useful for you know just basically selecting edges. Now, do keep in mind if you're doing something like a fillet, uh, fillet expert does have quite a few options. If I select an edge, you can see that it does a reasonably good job of selecting or filtering areas where you might right, where you might want a particular fillet to reside. So. Using Control A is, is useful in a lot of ways, but do keep in mind Fillet Expert and, and um, does have an option to make filleting a lot easier. Um, so we've covered most of the, of the user interface stuff. Let's go ahead and get into document recovery. It's one of the options that we had discussed. If I go into Options, Backup and Recover, um, some of the new things, um, Auto Recover, um, is, is you can change how Often it, it saves in terms of minutes. Previous releases, SOLIDWORKS 2011 and back, allowed you to auto-recover based on a number of changes. That option is not going to be available in 2012. But you can change where your auto-recover location is stored. Uh, one, of the, one of the caveats or one of the options that is listed in the help file is that it is, um, it's not allowed that you put that on a network folder. And if you think about kind of the way that the process works, you typically don't want your auto recover information to have it reach across a network connection, um, save the data. That's going to cause some latency. And then if you have system issues or network instability issues, that's going to translate into stability issues for SOLIDWORKS. So these options within backup and recovery are definitely different in 2012. Um, auto recover essentially works the same. It's just uh, it's going to be auto recover information in minutes versus the number of changes. So hopefully if you've been using SOLIDWORKS for some time, or even if you're a new user, um, you've managed to get into the SOLIDWORKS tutorials. If you've not gotten into them, uh, they're a really great resource for learning SOLIDWORKS and some of the features that you may not have um, seen in training, or if it's something that, you, that it's been a couple of releases since you've used SOLIDWORKS, it's a good resource to, to tag. Um, in SOLIDWORKS 2012, there are a couple of new tutorials. One of them is for PhotoView 360, and the other one is for appearances. Um, in 2011, SOLIDWORKS added the Appearance Manager, which is the ability to really dig into where a given appearance is, whether it be at a part level, or if an appearance be at a part level, or a face level. Um, there's a lot of different options for appearances, and there's a lot of things that you can leverage to make your models look more realistic and uh, lend themselves to photo rendering within PhotoView 360. So going into the SOLIDWORKS tutorials, whenever you launch it, it um, spans the display. On the left side, you'll have SOLIDWORKS. On the right side, you'll have the tutorials. And the tutorials are interactive. So as you select different options within the tutorials, it's kind of a side-by-side, click-by-click -side, um, type of tutorial. Um, so if I go into the first set of tutorials, can see that the new new ones are things that have had changes added to them have an asterisk next to them. Uh, appearances, Photo View 360 are the new ones, and so this allows you to get in and uh, you know, really learn more about this functionality. Um, this is typically you know, kind of top level stuff, but it, it gives you an idea of where to where to go um, and and how to start experimenting with different ways to to leverage SolidWorks to your needs. Um, one thing that we've found with um, with the with the tutorials is that they're a good 
um, starter before you start training um, in the in the SolidWorks classes. And there are also good refreshers for, um, for for going through things before you attempt a CSWP exam because the way that the tutorials are structured are the way that SolidWorks kind of intends the software to be used. So it's a good good resource for a number of reasons. Um, so I'd encourage you to, to take a look at those things. But in 2012, PhotoView 360 and appearances have been uh, have been added. And you also might want to take a look at if you're into automation and scripting. Um, some of the, the, the tutorials as far as API stuff goes are pretty helpful. Um, another resource for, for that information would, would be the, um, the SolidWorks forums through the customer portal. So we'll go ahead and uh, close this. And then we'll switch back over to SolidWorks and talk about a couple of other things that are new to 2012. Um, whenever you do a section view, so within the Heads Up toolbar, select Section, there's a new option that says uh, Keep Cap Color. This allows you to, if I select this part, if I want my cap to be red, it'll keep the red color. Um, you can also turn that off, so if you want a section view retaining the original part colors, um, so it kind of gives you a, a better look, uh, maybe even for just doing a screenshot, those types of things, you can save those, save the cap colors, or not depending on what your needs are. If I keep the cap color and say I want it to be something like uh, green, say OK, maybe do another section. Take this and maybe pull it out a little bit. And notice that keep cap color is on the first section. It's inferred that the cap color is going to be present for the other faces. So you can see where first section plane is green, the other one's a lighter green. Um, so those are kind of cool options for, for sectioning within the assembly. Some of the other options um, as far as the user interface goes, and it's a little bit difficult to, to show, but um, the, the just the, the general quality of the graphics have been improved over 2011 as far as anti-aliasing, things like dimensions. Uh, those types of things. You're going to have a sharper image and this becomes more critical as your monitors get bigger and bigger and your resolution gets becomes uh, tighter. You really want the graphics to, to not pixelize or become jagged. So in 2012 SOLIDWORKS has made some efforts to making that uh, the larger displays and higher resolution a lot easier for users to, to work around. So coming into file properties, this is a new option. Um, in previous releases, if you wanted to set up a template and then have a custom property kind of predefined, you would have to have put a space in there. So I'll say that this is maybe um, purchased. In again, in previous releases, I would have had to put some value in here, whether it be a space, a period, an underscore, those types of things, something as a placeholder. But in 2012, I can actually have blank file properties which is a, a kind of a cool feature. Um, so that, that's, that also applies to configuration-specific properties as well. If I want to just delete this out, my file property can actually be blank now. Um, one of the things that SOLIDWORKS added as far as your system goes is the addition of a SOLIDWORKS resource monitor. The resource monitor runs in your system tray and should be fairly you know, unobtrusive. It's not really taking up any resources. But what it does allow you to do is monitor your system. If you start seeing a lag, um, you're going to see, and, and you're looking at the help file right now as far as it relates to the resource monitor, you're going to see three different icons. A uh, green check mark means everything's OK. A yellow exclamation mark means that they're one of the, the system resources is running low. And then a red means that the resources are almost completely consumed. Uh, this becomes more relevant on a 32-bit platform because of the lack of memory or addressable memory. Um, you're kind of capped off at 2 gigs. You can maybe squeeze 2.8, 2.9 gigs if you use a, a, special, a special switch on the operating system. 64-bit uh, doesn't really have that problem because there's, the system memory is what it is and, and Windows will manage it and make as much available to any given process as is possible. Um, so just keep in mind if you see this running down in the system tray, that's what those icons mean, and it's also intended to help you, uh, you know, spot problem areas within your uh, workstation that might be causing stability issues within SolidWorks.
And then the final thing to uh, to review is the addition of um, the, the some changes in the installation manager. So now if you go into your programs and features, and on Windows XP, this is going to be um, add remove programs. So if you right click on an option or on any given application, within SolidWorks you can say uninstall or change. Depending on which one you choose, you're going to get two different options. If you select change, it's going to analyze the current install and then allow you to add or remove um, you know, add-ins, those types of things. If you want to modify the install, it'll change it. If you select uninstall, then it launches the installation manager with a special set of instructions, and I've already got this run. Um, you can completely uninstall, but there's a new option under advanced. So if I select change, the clean, this is this is equivalent to the clean uninstall that we've been kind of distributing um, on our website, but this allows you to remove programs and features, or program files and folders, reg keys, data files and folders, downloads, and so on. Um, notice that it's aware of where my install is. And so I've got two versions of SOLIDWORKS running on this particular laptop at the moment or installed on this on this laptop. And you can tell by you know the parenthesis two. Really probably a better practice would be to put the year uh, next to it during the install. I should really put 2012. But what it's looking at is the current install and its ability to uninstall the current the 2012 version. Um, it's relevant that I do have 2011 on this workstation, so the only thing that it's going to perform a clean uninstall on is 2012. It's not going to know enough to go back upstream and remove all of the bad or the, the extra data from from, an, from previous installs. So what you want to do is still, you know, for 2011, if you've got older versions, still perform a clean uninstall. Um, that's going to involve going to program files. If you're within uh, Windows Vista or Windows 7, you need to go to program data as well. Uh, there's some stuff in common files. And if, if you look on our website, we've got clean uninstall instructions for Windows XP, Vista, and Windows 7. But starting with SOLIDWORKS 2012, there is the addition of the ability to do a clean uninstall. Um, it's generally advisable as you're going from major release to major release to perform a clean uninstall the previous release. And the reason for this is that from year to year, SOLIDWORKS may make um, small changes as far as the registry keys, file locations, and those types of things. And unless you really have a reason to have parallel installs, and you know, a lot of contractors do have this, this need to run multiple versions, and that's fine. But if you're standardizing to a particular single install or single uh, version of SOLIDWORKS, you want to remove all of the stuff from previous releases and, and come in clean. Um, another thing that we find in tech support is people using the copy settings wizard files from previous releases. And this has been known to cause issues from time to time because, again, the differences between software releases, uh, the way that DLLs get registered, those types of things, may not be the same between release from release to release. And so even though it may seem a little bit more time consuming up front to go through and set all your m menu settings up at the outset, you may want to consider just doing that to avoid stability issues in the future. Um, and then something that I probably don't really have a good way to to illustrate on this webcast is some changes in the in admin image options. Um, administrators can use uh, the new uninstall options that we're looking at here to do a complete uninstall across the network on client computers. Um, they're also available on the client install options within the option editor. Um, so if you have an admin image, you can go in, hit the option editor, and then tell it to do a, a clean uninstall. Um, administrators can also pre-select uh, what SOLIDWORKS toolbox standards that you want to install from a, a predefined list. So for example, if you're not going to use the you know, DIN standards or um, some you know, Canadian standards, things that you may not necessarily use in your day in, day out operations, you don't want to have them sitting out there for users to, to get confused by. Um, you, you can eliminate which, which of the standards get installed. Um, typically, things like PIMS, ANSI inch, ANSI metric are sufficient for most uses in the States. Uh, so there's some different options there. I'll go ahead and exit the installation manager. Close off my uh, programs and files. And uh, I think that's that's about about it for right for now. Uh, we've got visual improvements. We covered that. Section display and coloring. We, we, we discussed those items. Uh, unit measure, or you know, going back up through my slides. 
mass gestures, we covered those, recent documents and open documents containing folders. There's a lot of new, you know, kind of small things within the interface that may not seem very important at the outset, but as you start using them, uh, I think that you'll find those helpful. So we've got a couple more minutes uh, available for this webcast, so I'm going to cover some things that maybe we get some, you know, we do get questions on. Uh, the first of which is how to contact us. Um, if you go to our website, www.ddicad.com, we do have the ability to select the hotline. Our phone number is 800-575-7543. You can also contact us by going to the e-support form. And this is an ability to upload files to us. Uh, and basically, we just need your name, email address, company, serial number, uh, some information from you. But then if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see the ability to upload a file. There's not really a file limit. I mean, I suppose that theoretically it's around one or two gigs, but for most issues, um, th there's more than enough room to accommodate file sets that you guys are sending us. Uh, so please feel f free to contact us. I mean, we're always glad to help you guys. Um, some of the other things that we have on our website, uh, webcasts, these are this is the archive. Um, actually, it's probably maybe where you found this. And also upcoming webcasts, uh, you know, productivity webcasts, what's new stuff. And then also our tech tips um, are, are different ways that you can get information about SOLIDWORKS and you know, things that we, we try to put out for you guys to watch. Um, another resource that you may want to consider using, if you don't have one already, is go to the SOLIDWORKS website, go to their login page, which is right here, and then you're going to see some different options. Um, you want to go to the SOLIDWORKS customer portal, and if you don't have an account, go ahead and click here to create an account. And it's going to ask you for an email address and a serial number. And then once you put those items in, it asks you to you know, confirm some things about your company, what they currently have on record as registered for your company. And then once you get in, um, you can Let's see if I remember my password for this side. So once you get into the customer portal, um, you're going to see a few options. You're going to see your company name, what your subscription is valid through. Uh, one of the common issues that we get, especially this time of year, whenever everyone's trying to get in, up, upgrade to the latest version, is that your customer portal account isn't necessarily completely finished. One of the things that if, uh, if you're on support or if you have a subscription contract, you shouldn't see any padlocks. But if you do see padlocks, nine times out of ten, the only thing that you really need to do is follow the register my products link. This gets you into the ability to get to the forums, search the knowledge base, and then probably most importantly to most users is go to downloads and updates. Now if you go to downloads and updates, um, you're going to see the different versions, SOLIDWORKS information, the 3 a Composer product, and then some free CAD tools, things like uh, you know, eDrawings, SOLIDWORKS Viewer, SOLIDWORKS Explorer, uh, Composer, it's a, a newer product that, that SOLIDWORKS started offering, so you have all the different add-ins add for that. And then, of course, SOLIDWORKS. <coughs> so you would just select which version of SOLIDWORKS you want to run, or that you're currently running, accept the uh, license agreement after reading it, of course. And then most users will want to download the installation manager and then let it manage the files that it downloads. There are occasions where you um, may, may want to upgrade a PDMWorks workgroup server or a solid network license manager. Um, to do that, you would scroll down select the last option, select from your list, and for this purpose, uh, as far as getting those particular products, you probably don't really need to specify a version because it just gets you to the contents of the DVD. And again, this is useful for situations where you may just need to grab a certain element, like maybe one of the prerequisite files, or as I mentioned earlier, um, things like the SOLIDWORKS license manager or workgroup server that may reside on a computer that doesn't necessarily need an entire SOLIDWORKS install, just the uh, those just those particular applications. Um, as it relates to upgrading those things, um, SOLIDWORKS Solid Network License Manager uh, does generally require the license to be modified and checked back in or returned. Um, I think that in, within the menu system you're going to see transfer the license. So before you upgrade from upgrade to 2012 from a previous release, it's always a good idea to transfer the license back. Um, SOLIDWORKS Workgroup PDM server this year does require activation, 
Uh, so you're going to need to have your network serial number or your, I'm sorry, your um, SolidWorks serial number available for that install as well. And then another um, application that can help you manage your licenses is the activation wizard. The activation wizard allows you to, if you've uninstalled SolidWorks but forgot to transfer a license, if everything on the computer is the same as it was prior to having SolidWorks installed, rather than reinstalling SolidWorks entirely and then going in and transferring a license, which can be time consuming, you can run the activation wizard and it will go through and do kind of a mock activation, allow you to transfer the license back and free it up uh, for other users to use on other workstations. Um, and then also, in this, as I mentioned earlier in the webcast, there's quite a few changes to Toolbox. You can see that all the different standards are available, so if you just need to download one particular standard, you can do that, as well as the SolidWorks help file. So they've really branched this out in recent releases as far as the ability to, to get in and get an individual package without having to know exactly where to go on the DVD. Um, so those are some, some general things about the SolidWorks customer portal um, that we kind of get asked, and since we had a little bit of extra time on this webcast, I figured I would go ahead and, and cover it for you guys. Um, so again, that, that concludes this webcast. Uh, please feel free to contact us. Uh, website's ddicad.com, and you can also email or call us Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Thanks a lot.